What a beautiful hymn, Jesus is coming again. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Are you happy to be here today? Yeah. Anyone brought a friend? Anyone brought a friend? A friend? Anyone brought a friend? No? Huh? Yeah, you brought a friend? Wow. Oh, that's your sister, though. Yeah, that's okay. I'll count it. <clears throat> Anyone, <laughs> Anyone else brought a friend? You brought a friend? Where is, okay, in the back there, over there, awesome, welcome, happy to have you here today, excited to see you, anyone else brought a friend today, anyone else, no, just raise your hand, it's okay, if you brought a friend, we're happy to have you, you got a little girl, brought a friend over there, Not, mostly we have kids bringing friends and stuff like that, I brought friends, I brought three friends today, I brought my family, <laughs> I'm so happy to have them with us today, you know more photos, no more pictures. I got my beautiful wife here with me. Um, you, you can meet them at the, at, after service. There, you'll see them all around the place there. I'm so happy to have them with us today. Um, my daughter, Brittany, will be singing a song at the end of, um, in, in our appeal time. Uh, Brad and my beautiful wife, we're so happy to have them with us today. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful morning, and we're so thankful. I'm happy to be back. Once again, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you very much. I want to thank the board and, uh, and the, those who organized. I want to thank Josue and Jelena, Pastor Josue. Where is Pastor Josue? He was here a minute ago. Thank you so much for, for, for hosting me for all the time that I was at your place, for putting bugs on my bed and all that stuff like that. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Jelena, for every, all that you've done. And, of course, for um, your kids, Maya and um, Leah. Leah. <laughs> they are so amazing. Um, my throat is a bit touched, so I won't be my fullest today. But I'm happy to be here and happy to have my family with me. Um, my son Travis isn't here, but he hopefully sometime soon will be with us. Just, just a, a, a note, I just want to, you know, um, by respect and, and courtesy, I want to uh, mention um, the tragedy that happened with the hockey team, was it? Yes. In Humboldt, and, um, you know, we express our condolences to the family of that, um, of each one of their, one of those members, um, on behalf of the Henderson Family Church. <clears throat> it is something that really, really shocked the world. And it's just right next door, right? And it, and it hits the hockey-loving fans. And even if you're not a hockey-loving person, you are a person, and it hurts every time uh, young, promising people just, you know, we lose them like that. It's painful, and um, we pray that God comforts the family. I want us to take just one minute to pray for the family, if you don't mind. Yeah? Let's bow our head for prayer. Dear God, Father, we don't understand these things, and they're beyond our understanding, our comprehension. But Lord, when tragedy like this hits the world, the sports world, and you know, just each individual family, it hurts, it pains. Lord, the parents, the sisters, the brothers, cousins, the family, we just pray that you may comfort them at this time, Lord. They're in much pain, Father, but help them to remember and to know that there is life beyond this world. Please be with them and strengthen them now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. I also want to mention, I want you to know that today we begin our prayer ministry. Okay, we have a great, beautiful ministry of about 25 persons, 20, 25 persons that are going to be praying and praying and praying and praying because Henderson is a praying church. Could somebody say amen? amen? Henderson is a church that believes in prayer. Henderson is a church that believes in the mighty power of God. So even right now while we are here worshiping, there is a group of people praying for you and for me. Isn't that amazing? Even while we're here worshiping, there are people praying for you. 
Amen? Right now, as we are live on Facebook, we have a prayer request right now that I will pray for in a minute as well. So we believe that God answers prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. And uh, we just want you to know that, that there is a prayer ministry that is active and going on right, 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 right now. Okay, I also want you to know that the board members of this church, the board members, we are doing a prayer retreat this weekend. We started last night. We're going, going on today at 6 and then tomorrow at 10. The board, the church board, the Henderson church board, we are praying. We're seeking God's guidance, okay? We do not, we would be presumptuous to try to do anything without seeking God's Holy Spirit, there is no way. I mean, this is God's church. This belongs to Him. So we have to make sure that we are seeking God's presence in everything that we do. Um, also, I want you to know that, um, that we are beginning a new series, as you would see here. Our new series is Signs of the End. Okay, we're going to be talking about the signs of the soon coming. We want to remind you that we are living in the last days of this earth's history. Whether you believe it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, it's not up to us. It is what the Bible has taught us. It is what Jesus said, that his coming is very soon. So these upcoming few weeks, we will be talking about signs of the coming of the end and the soon coming of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? And that's why we sang today, lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. I want you and me to sing that one more time, just the first stanza. Is that okay? You want to sing with me? All right, let's do it then. Right there, you know how to stand. Let's sing, lift up the trumpet, and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Lift up the trumpet, and loud let it ring. I don't hear you. Come on. I want to hear you. Cheer up, you chill, you pilgrim. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Sorry, it's not there. Coming again, everyone. Coming again. Coming again. Let's do that one more time. Lift up the trumpet one more time. The same, the same one. Lift up the trumpet and love. promise that you will come again and receive us unto yourself that where you are we may be also as we go through your word today lord we are praying for your holy spirit to speak to our hearts dear god and revive us once again lord let the loud cry that says that the the, the husband is soon to come that it may once again Revive your church, God, as it did in the 1800s, as it, as it did when William Miller preached the gospel that Jesus Christ was soon to come. May you do it once again, dear God, to remind your church that we are living in the last days of this earth's history. Father, I'm praying for that request that has been mentioned on Facebook here this morning, God. I'm, I pray in the name of Jesus that you may bless those persons that they've been praying for, prayed for, God, asked for. I pray there, God, that you may give them the, the, the faith to know and believe that there is a God in heaven that answers prayers. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. There is a God in heaven that is a healer. He is a protector. He is a deliverer. God bless that person. And if there 
here? Is anyone here today, God, that is depressed? Anyone here that, that is full of anxiety and worries? I pray in the name of Jesus that you may free, oh God, that it, it, each mind and each heart may be focused on the Word of God, on the Spirit of God that will lift us up, oh God, and remind us that Jesus is coming again. In your precious name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I was born and raised in this church. And from time I have knowledge of myself, I know that Jesus is soon to come. As a matter of fact, when Christmas time came around and, uh, and, and all the <coughs> sorry <coughs> and all of the, 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 the firecrackers and, and all this stuff was going on, I, I, I got scared because I thought it was the end of the world. Really, I was afraid because I, I, I felt like that's what the end of the world was going to look like. 47 years of my life, I've been waiting for the coming of Jesus. My wife and I were married when we decided to go off and study theology to become a pastor. And I remember telling one of my friends that we were going to go off and study and he said, why are you going to do that? Jesus is soon to come. Why are you going to leave your hometown <clears throat> and go off and study? What if Jesus comes before you finish? And I really believe that Jesus is going to come then. <coughs> but you know what? He hasn't come yet. 47 years. Waiting for Jesus to come. Some of you have been waiting more than that. Some of you have been waiting probably 60 years. Maybe 70. The message about the coming of Jesus has been preached from the 1800s in a mighty way. But here we are today, about 160-something years after our church has been preaching about the second coming of Jesus, and we're still here. We're still here waiting for Jesus to come. Now, this morning, I want to take you on a journey <clears throat> from the Old Testament in the life of the Israelite nation. But before I go there, I want to tell you why I'm going to use their story to talk about the second coming of Jesus. I want to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat is not well today, but you're going to have to bear with me. Is that okay? It says, <clears throat> these things happened to them to the old Israel as what as examples for whom for us which us they are written down to warn us us who us us who who live when at the end of the age so Paul is saying guys the stuff that happened to the Israelite nation happened and they were written down so that we can learn from them. They happen as an example for us to learn. Hopefully not to make the same mistakes as they did. Now, <clears throat> what happened was the Israelite nation... <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> You're going to have a lot of patience with me today. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> These last few days, I've, I've been taking all I could to try to be good today, but we're going to make it through, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> there were 400 years in slavery. 430 years. In those 400 years in Egypt, some of God's people had even turned to idolatry. Some of God's people had stopped worshiping the true God. Most of the parents were sad for their children because their, a lot of their children had now turned away from their true religion and most of their children <clears throat> were now practicing all of the things that were being done by the Egyptians. God himself wanted to get them out of there, but they were not ready. They were not prepared. 
So the time was passing and passing by <clears throat> until about 430 years after they had gotten into Egypt, God decided now that he was going to deliver them. And he did it through a man by the name of Elijah. No? It wasn't Elijah. Really? It wasn't Elijah. Who was it? All right. <clears throat> I know I lost some of you by, by then. <clears throat> he chose Moses to go into the to Egypt, <laughs> sorry, to deliver these people. And, and um, when the time came and Moses went to Egypt and he talked to the elders, and he said to them, he says, guys, I'm all excited because God sent me. <coughs> and he said that now he's going to deliver you. And everyone is happy. Everyone is excited <coughs> because, oh my, this is not a good one to record today. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but I got a message for you, okay? And we're going to get this message across. Let me, let me just pause and let's pray, please. Let's, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, Father, I know my throat is not doing the best today. But God, you are a God of mighty power. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying, dear God, that you may please let this message reach the heart of your people today. Lord, <clears throat> please, dear God, I'm asking you today for a miracle. Have mercy, O oh God, on your church. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Send your angels here right now. Reach out or just say the word because I need you, God. Your church needs you now. Bless us, Father. Bless this message and bless your people. <clears throat> In your name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> So Moses goes to, the, to his people and he says, guys, God sent me to deliver you. God has sent me here because it's time to leave Egypt. And everybody's excited. Everybody's happy. Yes, we're going to leave Egypt now. But there was someone who was not excited about that. Thank you. <clears throat> this will help too. There was someone who was not happy about that, Pharaoh. Because the Egyptians had helped build their buildings, the pyramids and all these things, right? So, <clears throat> Exodus chapter 5, verses 6 and 9 says, That same day, <clears throat> Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slaves, drive, to the Egyptian slave drivers, and the Israelites' foremen. And he says, Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, <clears throat> but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they're crying out, let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. Load them down with more what? More work. Make them what? Sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. In other words, he's saying, what do you mean you're going to leave the you're going to leave me? What do you mean you're going away? He says instead of instead of going, you know what? I'm going to give you more work. You're lazy, you're idle, you're doing nothing. So he doubled their work. First, he used to give them the materials and now he says, you know what? I'm not going to give you any materials. You're going to do the same work and now I'm you got to find your own material. The people then came to Moses and cried to Moses, Moses, I thought God was going to deliver us. Moses, Moses went to God and says, God, um, wait a minute, God. You sent me here to deliver these people. 
And instead of delivering them, their, their work has been doubled. There's more work. There's more hardship. My people are suffering more, and you haven't delivered us. What's, what's wrong? Let me just use a point here. You know, sometimes you pray to God for things to happen, and instead of them getting better, they get worse. Has that ever happened to you? Sometimes you believe, and, and you know, there are a lot of promises in the Bible, and you wake up one morning, and the Bible says, you know what? Uh, I will bless you, I'll be with you, I'll go with you. And you're like, thank you, God, for that promise. And instead of it looking like it's getting better, it gets worse. This is what's happening here. God was about to do a great work, but instead of him freeing his people now, the enemy was oppressing them even more. You know, before the coming of Jesus Christ, things are going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. If you're waiting for this world to get any better, you're wrong. You know, that's, the, that's one of the reasons why people get so discouraged, get so disappointed in politicians, in governments, in, in, in presidents, in prime ministers, because people are looking for them to make things better. Never look for a prime minister to make things better. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's not going to happen. People are blaming President Trump for things that are happening right now. It's not even about Trump. You can have another president come and go and another president come and go. Things are just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse because that's what it prophesied. Before the coming of Jesus Christ, it's going to get just worse and worse. And this is what is happening here. The children of Israel said, you know what? Oh, yes, we're happy. But now, instead of God delivering us, it's just, they're just putting more work on us. More and more and more and more. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14, which is our scripture reading. It says, and knowing this, knowing this, that's a different translation. Let me read it from here. This is all more urgent for you to know. Um, let it, late it is. Time is doing what? Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is what? Is nearer now than when we first believed. If you believed 30 years ago, you're 30 years closer, nearer to the coming of Jesus. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will what? Will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on shining armor of right living. Verse 13. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or sexual uh, promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. And verse 14 says, Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways of indulge your evil desires. What, what Paul is saying is, he says, we are closer now than we first believed. The night is far spent. Jesus Christ is soon to come, dear church. And if we have ever to believe this, it is now. It is now. You know, as Moses went to the people and said to them, we have come to deliver you. Things looked darker than before, but God was, going, was, was about to deliver his people. So Moses went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, you know what? God sent me to deliver you. Pharaoh said, you're not going anywhere. Uh, Moses said, we will see. Then God sent Moses to, do, to, to show him great signs with ten plagues. Remember the ten plagues? In those ten plagues, God was not just going to touch the Egyptians, but he also wanted to make a point to the Israelites. Let me give you a couple of those. What was the first plague? And we're not going to go through all of them. The first plague was turning the river of Nile into what? Into blood. Now think about it. It wasn't just the river of Nile that was turned into blood. It was also the fountains of waters. So every, everywhere that had water was turned into blood. And that wasn't just like a colorant thing. That was actual blood. So that it smelled like blood, okay? It was actual blood that God turned water into blood. So that, and, 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 and by the way, it lasted about seven days. And, 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 and it, it's not like God then turned it back into water. It just, it just, it was just there lingering, okay? God stopped the production of blood, but then it was just there. So that smell continued. And after that, then he turned, then, then the frogs, and I was reading about this thing about frogs. It, it says that God could have 
after, the, after God produced all these frogs and they were all there and they all died after a while, God could have just disappeared the frogs, but he didn't do that. The frogs that were there, they just rotted, okay? So the place is now not just smelling like blood, but now you have all kinds of rotten frogs all over the place. Are you with me? And then after the frogs came the flies. And those flies weren't just normal flies. Apparently those flies also were venomous flies that when they bit, they actually bit people and it produced a lot of pain in the people that were there. So these plagues were really a bad, terrible thing. Now, the children of Israel, <clears throat> though they were protected than most, uh, from most of the plagues, some of these plagues affected them. For example, the smell that was there, it made them uncomfortable. They were not happy to be there any longer. And let me give, give you a point on this. God wants his people to be uncomfortable to live in this world. I want to make a point on that. I want, I, want, I want to highlight that. A lot of us, we want to be as comfortable as possible here. We want to make a lot of money to get a big house, to, to have a beautiful car, because we, we, want to, we want to be comfortable. God is not about making us comfortable. Because the more comfortable we are, the more we forget about God. The more comfortable we are, the less we want to make it to heaven. The more comfortable we are, the more we forget about heaven. God wants us to think that there is a better place coming up. That's why so many things happen in this world to wake us up, to make us uncomfortable. That we don't want to stay here any longer. We want to go. We want to leave. We want to move. We want to go to a better land. There is this beautiful little chorus in the, that we used to sing. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You hear that? This world is not your home, my friend. Don't live this life like this is the only life you got to live. Live this life as if there's a, another life up ahead of you. That's what God wanted these Israelites to feel uncomfortable. I want to leave this place. This place is stink. I'm tired of seeing frogs all over the place. I'm tired of smelling blood. And not just that. After that, all of the cows and the, and the horses and all the animals died. That was a terrible place to be in. And that's okay because God wanted to get his people out of there. He wanted them to feel uncomfortable. I want to leave this place. My friends, there are things that happen in this world that happen because God does not want you comfortable here. He wants you to want to leave. The reason why the message, the gospel of the, the everlasting gospel is not being preached as it should is because the Seventh-day Adventist Church has been gone to sleep. We're happy to be here. Why would, why would I want to go to heaven? Why, why go to heaven? If, if, if everything is so neat, so good, so kind, so nice. Sometimes we complain about being sick, but that sickness is probably what's going to make you want to go to heaven. Sometimes you complain about being poor, but that poverty is probably what's going to make you want to go to heaven. Sometimes you complain about the problems and the trials and the difficulties in our families, but that's what's going to make you want to go to heaven. God wants you to desire heaven because this world is not our own home. We're just passing through. This is just a pass through. We are pilgrims. We are sojourners. We do not belong to this world. That's why, you know, that's why Moses, Moses could, 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 could do what he did because the Pharaoh said, Moses, you could be the next king here in Egypt. Moses said, I don't want to be no king. I was not sent to this world to be king. I'm not an Egyptian. I'm a Hebrew. I was not brought here to be comfortable in the palace. God called me to deliver my people and that's what I'm going to do. Abraham, when God called Abraham out of Ur, he was comfortable there. He was good. He, he was, you know, he had everything established, all his nice neighbors and all of the cattle and everything that he had. But God said, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, 
sorry, God said to Abraham, I'm going to get you out of here. Abraham's like, okay, God, that's fine. Let's go. He didn't even, God didn't even say where he was going to take him. Abraham didn't care where he was going as long as he was going where God led him. This world is not your home. This is not your home. Thank God. Praise God for that. I can tell you, thank God. <clears throat> so the ten plagues passed by. 2 Timothy 3, verse three put, verse 1 puts it this way. But know this, that in the last days, what will happen? There will be what? Difficult. And other translations says perilous times will come. And I can tell you we're living in those perilous days today. You know, I was, <clears throat> I was um, cha doing chaplaincy in, in, a, in a hospital in the Cayman Islands before we came here. And um, I heard someone said there, he says, in two or three years, the, the number one industry in the world is going to be health care. Now, what does that mean? Now, that, that sounds nice in technical words. But what it really means is people are going to be so sick that the, the, you, the, the most money is going to be made out of trying to make people well. Think about it. <clears throat> when I was growing up, I could only think about one lady who had diabetes. And I remember they cut her leg off, and I asked my mom, what happened to her? She said, well, she has diabetes, and they had to cut her leg off. Today, diabetes is so common, I don't know, maybe a high percentage of those that are here today have diabetes. I was, I was at an immigration office renewing my passport when I was, when I was um, back home, and I, I sat beside a girl. She was probably in her 20s, maybe 20 years old, and uh, we started a conversation, and she told me that the doctor uh, found out she had diabetes when she was two years old. I was like, when I was growing up, diabetes for a two-year-old, that's unheard of. It would never happen, <laughs> okay? Today, any, any age, a person can have diabetes. Heart disease are everywhere you go, everywhere you turn. I, I, I was in this hospital in the Cayman Islands, and people were coming from all over the world with heart issues, heart problems, from everywhere you could think about. Rich or poor, doesn't matter, sick with heart disease, Today, a, a very new name disease, obesity. That, wasn't, that was not a disease when we were growing up. You were, if you were overweight, you pretty much overweight. That's it. Today's a disease. Think about the mental issues in the world today that are happening. Everything is just growing or increasing. You know, you got more people with mental disorders today than you ever had in the past. These things are happening because we are, the, the world is just changing, transforming itself, and we are living in the last days of the earth's history. And I'm, again, I'm saying to you, this must make us uncomfortable. This must make us desire to want to go to heaven. Now, it came to the time where the Israelites were about to, to leave, but God wanted them to do one last thing before they left. One last thing. Exodus 12, verses 3 and 11. And he says to them, <clears throat> Anyone, sorry, announce to the, to the whole community of Israel that the tenth day of this month, each family, each what? Must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. One animal for each household. And you know what they were going to do with this? Two things. Number one, they were going to eat the animal. They were going to roast it. They couldn't eat it raw, and they couldn't eat it boiled. They had to roast it. Number one, they were going to eat it. And number two, at midnight, they were going to take the blood of this animal, <clears throat> and they were going to put it on the posts of their houses. Because an angel was going to fly over at midnight. What time? Midnight. At midnight. And any house that did not have the blood, the firstborn of that house was going to die. So that when the angel passed over and he saw the blood, the angel would pass over and not into the house. That blood, my friend, had to be done by the family. Not just that. Verse 11. I don't know if you have verse 11 there as well for me. Yeah. These are your instructions for eating the meal. 
be fully what? Be fully dressed. Wear your what? Sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with what? Urgency for this is the Lord's Passover. Check this out. The people were not just to eat it, but they were supposed to eat it how? How? Dressed. They were going to have to have their shoes on, dressed up, and ready to leave. I want to make a point to the church here today. That blood represents the blood of Jesus Christ. We can't make it to heaven through the, without the blood of Jesus Christ. But it's not just the blood of Jesus that we need. We also need to have that preparedness. We also need to be, be thinking about, you know what? I, I got to get ready for Jesus coming. I got to be ready for him. I remember when the coming of Jesus was an actual thing in the church. I remember when everybody talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ. I remember when our parents told us that Jesus is soon to come. People don't talk about that anymore. Have you realized that? This is not a thing that happens anymore. We see stuff going on in the world today. We're like, oh yeah, by the way, you know, there was a lot of bombing last night in Syria. Terrible things are happening in the world today. But we're just, we're just getting so custom of seeing these things happening that it doesn't make a point to us anymore. I can remind you, I can tell you today that these are signs of the end of coming of, of the world. So what it's saying to us here today is we need to be ready. We need to prepare. They, these guys, they were gonna, God was going to take them out of Egypt, but he wanted them to be prepared to leave that night. Not just to put the blood, not just to eat it any kind of way, not just to stay in their pajamas or whatever. He wanted them to be what? Ready because he was going to do a great work for them. I am saying to the Henderson Church today, Jesus wants you to be ready. He wants you to live ready. You know, we used to think sometimes, we used to ask ourselves, and you may be asking yourself this question too. Why is it that Jesus didn't tell us the date and time that he's coming? Have you asked that? Why didn't Jesus just say, you know, I'm coming at this certain date? Well, one of the answers to that is he wants you to always be ready. Because what if Jesus said, I'm coming in 2020 and I'm waiting for 2020? I'm like, ah, you know what? I'll wait for 2020 to get ready. But what if I don't make it to 2020? What, if, what about that, Tim? That wouldn't be a good thing, huh? What if I died this year? I didn't make it to 2020. I was waiting for 2020, like a month before. I say, like, yeah, you know what? I'll just, I'll just wait a month before, and I come and get baptized, and then I'm good. Oh, God wants us to live ready. Every moment of the day, we don't know when is our last day. I mean, with all respect, that bust of, of, of players left from one point to the next, and with all the dreams in their hearts and their minds to make it to that point B. You don't plan things. Things just happen. But God desires you to be prepared at every moment, every time. That you, you, yes, the blood of Jesus Christ, but also that preparation mode to know that we are living in the last days of this earth's history. So now they're, they're, they're ready, they, 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 they did the blood and they ate the, they ate the lamb. And now at midnight, Pharaoh says to them, leave, get out of here because Pharaoh's firstborn was killed. And he says, leave, get out of here. And as they were leaving now, they're going out, they met a great next obstacle and we're ending here. What was the greatest obstacle they met after they left Egypt? The Red Sea. They could not cross the Red Sea, obviously. Because they had children and families and everything else. But now they got across the Red Sea. And when they got there, Moses cries out to the Lord. And the Lord opened the Red Sea. And they crossed as on dry land. And when they reached the other side of the Red Sea. And they looked back at their enemies. All of the enemies were drowned because the sea closed back on them. And now Moses, with all the people of Israel, cries out and praises the Lord and sings a song. 
Moses sings a song. And you know what? As I read the song that Moses sang, it had nothing to do with him. The song of Moses is a song of praise for the work that God has done. Do you know that those who make it to heaven will also sing the song of Moses? You know, there in, in, in Revelation 15, and I'm going to close with this text. Revelation 15 says, Then I saw in heaven another marvelous event of great significance. Seven angels were holding the seven last plagues, which would bring God's wrath to completion. Verse 2, I saw before me what seemed to be a glass sea mixed with fire and on it stood all the people who had been victorious over the beast and his statue and a number uh, uh, representing his name they were all holding harps that god had given them and they were singing what they were singing what come on church what were they singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. And here it is. This is a song. Great and marvelous are the works of the elders of Henderson Church. Great and marvelous are my mother's works. Great and marvelous are my works. Am I reading right? Whose works are great and marvelous? Your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O king of the nations. Verse 4. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous deeds have been revealed. The song of Moses and the Lamb is a song of victory. A song of praise to what God has done for his people. A song of praise for what God has done for you and for me. When we make it to heaven by God's grace, we're not going to make it because of good stuff that we've done. When you make it to heaven and you try to figure out, why am I here? How come I made it here? And you try to look back in your history and say, hey, wait a minute. Could it be because, because I went to church every Saturday? You're like, no, but that's not it. Could it be because I kept the commandments? No, I don't think that's it either. Could it be because I, 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 I gave stuff to the poor? No, 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 no. Could it be because you cannot find anything that says that it made you worthy to make it to heaven? That's the only reason you can say the glory and the victory belongs to God. As we go closing here today, when the Israelites were about to leave, God said, all families come together and kill the lamb. Eat the meat and put the blood on the doorposts. All families. Every time God wants to save, he wants to save families together. God is not trying to pull one brother out of the family or a sister out. He wants all the brothers and sisters together. He's not pulling the father out and leaving the mother. He wants the father and the mother together. He wants families to be saved. When God told Noah to go into the ark, he said, you and your wife and your children, your family, go into the ark. God wants to save families today. There's an old hymn that I, 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 I love. It's not even in the hymnal anymore. So I asked my daughter to sing it for us. I want you to hear the words of this hymn. And you can join her in the chorus if you like. On Jordan's stormy banks, I stand. On Jordan's stormy banks, I stand. I cast and a wishful eye. To Canaan's fair and happy land Where your where possessions my lie possessions If you know it, can you join Brittany and sing the chorus? We will rest We will rest in the fair, in the fair and happy, happy land. land Just across Just across the, the evergreen ever shore. shore Sing the song Sing the song of, of Moses and the Lamb
going to ask you to do something. If there are families here, I'm going to ask the father of the family to pick up your, your family, your children, your wife, and come here with me. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for all the families that are here today. All the dads that are here, go and look for your son, your daughter that is here right now and bring them here. I want to pray with them. I want to invite my family to come up as well. As they come, I want you to sing the third stanza, Brittany. Find your husband, find your wife, find your children, and come on and come up. All those wide extended plains shines one eternal day. Just come up here. All families that are here. There God I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. When we get to heaven, God is going to call you and say, Where are your children? Where's your wife? Where's your husband? We will rest Can you in the think about fair and happy getting to heaven and Jesus himself is there? Just across the evergreen There's space here. Just come right up. Make space for someone. I want everybody, all the families that are here, I want you to come up with me. There's a lot of room up here. Come right up. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. We, we're good. We got a lot of space here. When shall I reach that happy place? And Just keep coming. Come right over here. Jesus okay don't, don't be afraid anytime Jesus did something he made people publicly confess him so never be ashamed of Jesus and, and, and doing this this is great this is amazing okay coming here with your family today I just want to pray for you I just want to pray with you I want to pray with you and ask God to protect you, to protect the families, keep you together, that when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, just as you're together today, you can go with all your family to be with Jesus. You don't want to leave anybody here. You don't want to stay here. You want to make it there. I also want to pray for those who are there sitting. If you would like to join us in this prayer, maybe, you're, you're, maybe your wife is not here, your husband isn't here, whatever reason, if you want to join in this prayer, I'm going to invite you to stand where you are. I want to pray with you and for you as well, right there where you are. Let us pray. God, we just want to thank you, Father, and praise your name because we believe that you are soon to come back and receive us to yourself. Jesus said in his word, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
Father, we believe these words. We don't just believe them. We know that they're true. But we also, Lord, see the signs that are happening around us. And we pray, Father, and we ask you, come, Lord Jesus, come soon. Because this world, God, is just getting worse and worse. We're uncomfortable to be here. We want to go home. We want to be with you. Thank you, Father. I pray for the families that are here standing, Lord, together. I pray for the fathers that are here, God. Help us as fathers to, to be more alert, to be more spiritual, to seek God more and more each day, Father. I pray for us to be better husbands, better parents. I pray, Father, for the wives that are standing here, God. I pray that you may give them love and patience in their hearts. I pray for the children, dear God. I pray that your Holy Spirit may be poured out upon us, Lord, that we may not grow cold and forget that we are living in these last days, but that we, that we may always bear in mind, keep it in our minds, that we are soon to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords come in the clouds of glory to take us home with him. Bless us now, Father. Bless those who are standing in the, in the congregation. May your Holy Spirit continue also to guide and be with them. For we pray and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, families, friends, everyone. God be with you. You may be seated. Let's sing together. We will rest as you go back. We will rest in the fear. We will rest in the fear, fear and, and happy land. Just across. Just across the evergreen shore. Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by. And dwell with Jesus evermore.